to create our neon inspired pinwheels we are going to be creating patterned paper first to create your patterned paper a pattern is something that repeats over and over again so our only key thing that we need to remember is that whatever pattern we do we fill the whole page with it right now i'm doing small brush strokes similar to the style of the color field paintings of alma thomas i'm creating lines on my paper but breaking it up with brush strokes right now i'm using tempera cakes these tempera cakes are neon fluorescent tempera cakes and that way the colors will glow in the dark i'm filling the entire page with one pattern after i fill the whole page with one pattern i will be going on to a second page with my second page, I'm going to try a different pattern. I can also try a different color. Remember, these tempered cakes work a little bit like watercolor paints. You need to activate them with water first, then you can add the paint to your page. Remember, anytime you're switching colors, you need to make sure you really give your brush a good bath before you go to your next color. That way you don't muddy up the colors in your palette. If you are noticing that your colors are not as vivid as you would like them to be, you can add a little bit more water and spend a little bit more time with your brush activating the color before going to your page. The cool thing about this paint is that it is black light reactive. It does not actually glow in the dark if it is just in a dark room, but if you use a black light or a UV light, you will see the colors glow and pop off your page. To really see that, we could turn off the lights and we could see that when we use a black light flashlight that these colors are glowing vividly on our page. Both the papers react differently, just like different colors of paint will react differently. You can choose paper that is already black light reactive, or you could pick paper that's not reactive and let your paint do all the reactivity. For this project, we are using two pieces of paper. So you could choose to have one reactive and one not, but we are using black light reactive paint on both pieces of paper. We are only painting one side of the paper and after it is dried, we can assemble it into a pinwheel. Once your papers are dried, you are going to be adding glue to the side that does not have paint. I recommend going around the edge of your paper and then filling it in a little bit. We don't want to make a huge puddle, but we want to make sure everything is covered. We are pressing the other unpainted side together so that the two painted sides will be on the outside of our shape. Next, after it's dried a little bit, we are going to be creating our cuts that are from each corner towards the middle. I like to fold my paper so I know where the middle of my paper would be. I'm cutting in, but I'm not cutting all the way to the center because that would cut my paper apart from each other. I'm cutting about halfway to the center from the corner. Then I will be folding every other corner into the center to create my pinwheel shape. Finally, I will be using a pin to go through all of these papers, through the middle of the paper, and into a chopstick or a wooden dowel or a popsicle stick or some type of stand for your work. You can use a thumbtack or you can use a pin for this process.